Continuing on from the previous video, the next step is to fold the random character generator into a script so multiple characters can be generated. So we're going to grab this formula, just copy it into the clipboard using the keyboard command, close the data viewer, and then go into the script workspace. We'll call this random password. So we'll put in here a set field. Now set field is your workhorse for putting values into a field. It requires a calculation. It can be as simple as moving the contents of one field into another field, or it can be more complicated like what we're doing right now. So I'm going to specify the password field be equal to, and we'll paste that formula in there. And now when we run this, what we're going to do is get one random character in the password field. It'll evaluate this formula and then put the result right in there. We want more than one, so what we need to do is put this inside of a loop. A loop is a handy construct. It's two script steps and it repeats us over and over and over again. So we do need some way to get out of this. So how do we do that? Well, probably the best way is to simply put an exit loop if. There's many way, ways to exit a loop, but an exit loop if is pretty easy because you can say, hey, let's check out how many characters are in the password field. And we'll say 10 right now. We're going to get fancier later, but we'll say 10 is the limit right now. So we'll say length password equals 10. Once it equals 10, then it's going to exit. The only problem right now is this works pretty well, but we're still only going to end up with one random character because each time this set field runs during the loop, it's going to take the result of this and completely replace what's in the password field, unless we use a technique called append, which would be done like this. We simply put the password and concatenate it right there. So we say concatenate this with a random value. So what it does is it grabs the value from the password field, whether there's one, two, or three, or four so far, and allows another one to be added onto it, and then takes a result of that and replaces what's in there. So it, it's almost like it temporarily holds it and uh, allows you to put it in the formula and then puts it over itself. It works, trust me. We're going to do it right now. So now we've got that running. We've got the ability to put in those values and exit when there's 10 of them. We're also going to need, in case there's an existing password, another set field outside the loop. That's going to set the password field to the very simple formula of quote, quote. We're going to need this. Otherwise, we're going to be adding on to whatever exists there if something does exist. So we're simply going to erase it and then put the password in there. So there's no checks and balances to see if we want to worry about whether we want to keep that password or not or whether we're overriding it. For right now, we're just getting the basic script done. So let's save it. Close this. In fact, I'm going to get rid of and clean up a little bit of this. We don't need all those other scripts in there right now. We'll go into layout mode and decide that our random password will be right here. Random password. And let's see if there's an icon for this. I doubt it. Uh, but we'll try it, see if there's an icon to go along with this. Sometimes you don't need them. And maybe the little right icon might be nice. Create a, it's creating that. Eh, works for me. So we'll go in here and choose Perform Script, Random Password. Go back into Browse Mode, and let's see how it works. Create a random password. You see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In fact, if you really want to see what's going on in slow motion, even though there's no problem with it, sometimes pulling up the script debugger, which is in FileMaker Advanced, is handy. It's for figuring out what's going wrong with the script, but it's also good for learning. So if we hit random password, we want to step into. If we do this, it's just going to run that script completely, and that's no good. We want to step into the script, into this perform script, so we need this one. They're very similar, but this one just runs whatever uh, script you see there, the perform script. This one steps into it so we can see everything that goes on. Now we can use this one or this one. It won't make a difference on this particular script, unless there was another perform script we want to step into. 
So we'll simply go one at a time. You see it empties it out. Went to the loop. There's the first character. Goes, well, the length is one, so I'm not going to exit. Add another one on. And it keeps going until it gets up to 10. And then it finally exits that loop. You can stop it by clicking this. This close button actually stops or continue you know, close the window but continues the script as if you hit the play button because the play button will just run the rest of the script th that way it'll just run it completely so don't be fooled by hitting this thinking you're stopping the script you actually have to hit the stop button and there's a few other items in here but I won't worry about them the one that's handy for me is this one going into the data viewer from here because sometimes you want to work with them together and going to the actual script if you want to see it that can be handy as well so there you go. There's a script for generating a random password. We're going to put some bells and whistles on it so it works a little bit better, but that's really the meat of the solution right there.